Hello, it's Pastor Keith, and it's morning prayer for Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024. And I'm Pastor Keith again, coming to you from the campus of Christ Lutheran Church in Mililani Town in the middle of Oahu, the state of Hawaii, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's good to have you here with us today. Uh, here's an interesting story, one that is not often read. This is Genesis 11. 1 to 11, I believe it is, or 1 to, let's see, what do they want us to do? 1 to 9. Okay, that makes more sense. Uh, it's the Tower of Babel, the last of the uh, primeval sagas or stories before the call of Abraham and Sarah. Now, this is after the flood, too. Now, the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and make a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not be understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, they left off the building of the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. A couple of things uh, about context, the setting of this story, and really the whole book of Genesis, was probably, probably, uh, heavily edited during the Babylonian exile, and that this story is, like the Genesis creation stories in particular, this story is a critique of Babylon. So the Tower of Babel, Babylonians worshipped in uh, giant ziggurats or pyramids or towers, and they would actually then, the kings and the priests would go up to the top, and there they would meet with God, come down from heaven, and they would be deified themselves. They would make sacrifices there. So the critique is that we are going to confuse the Babylonians who are all unified, and uh, we're going to throw them down. And so tiny little Israelite exiles, or Jewish exiles at that point, uh, are critiquing powerful Babylon. And they are also in a, taking this story from a more primeval saga uh, where they are reworking it. But that original setting was about why, why are all these people speaking different languages? Questions like that. And I like to say that there is something about diversity, the, the multiple languages and now races and cultures. There's something about that that God approves. So when I hear lots of prayers for unity, Christian unity or human unity or, you know, national unity, I want to say, even in an organization, let's all be united. It's in our differences and the clash of difference, the, the uh, bumping up of diversity, whether it's ideas or nation or race or gender or orientation or anything else, the bumping up of those is where innovation happens. Uh, one of the things about modernity is that we think we can control everything. That by planning, predicting, and executing and manipulating, we can control our world. Just like the Babylonians thought they could. And one of the, one of the things we're finding is we can't do that. And the more we try to control our world, the more we lose it. That's, that's why we say we are postmodern, because we are recognizing that modernity failed. It has failed. And science and technology alone cannot save us. 
we need the diversity of worldviews to actually save us and make us human again. Think about that. I get really annoyed when we are always praying for unity. Please, let's pray for diversity. Let's do that now. Epule kako, let us pray. O God, whose name is above all names, your grace cannot be contained within human limits. We offer our thanks for holy wisdom that comes in other voices, in religions and worldviews different from our own, and in prayers offered in the wideness of your love. Move us more deeply into understanding and partnership, willing to work together in mutual respect, always open to the grace that we have experienced in Jesus Christ, our light and life. Amen. And now may the loving God who has wondrously made us in the divine image in all of its amazing diversity, the creator, the redeemer, and the sanctifier, guide you, bless you, and protect you throughout this day. Amen.